Hi, guys. Thanks very much. Thanks for coming out. I was given quite a challenge today. I'm supposed to tell you what's going to happen in the future of consumer technology. Um, never a great, uh, a great accurate prediction uh, setup. I, I'm just bugged because I, I found that image on Google Images. I thought it would like convey drama and theatricality. Now it just, just looks like the cover of Dianetics. It's just, <laughs> I'm going to have to change that. Um, this is a very special occasion for me because uh, my column this week was my 10th anniversary column at the New York Times. The very first one that I wrote in the year 2000 was of a Microsoft product, and this week's was of a Microsoft product again. <laughs> Somehow that company is still there. Um, so the Times has led to all kinds of great things for me. I've, uh, it, it launched my TV career, my speaking career, uh, a lot of books. Um, so speaking of what the future is hold, I, I do have to say there's a disclaimer here. You always wind up looking like an idiot when you try to predict the future of technology. This is a 1954 uh, Rand Corporation projection of the home computer of the future. <laughs> what the 2000 for 50 years hence, what the computer might look like. Um, my question is, what's with the steering wheel? <laughs> it's like that, the cursor control module or something? I love this. With the teletype interface and the Fortran language, the computer will be easy to use. <laughs> Well, compared to Windows Vista, maybe. Um, no, 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 no. Ed, no. Edit that out. Edit that out. OK. Um, so there is a lot going on in technology. Um, it's my job to keep on top of it every week. And for me, it's like drinking from a fire hose. So I, I can only imagine what it is like for the average person. So fortunately, we've been given 18 hours for this talk. And um, no, just kidding. No, I'm just going to focus on a, a handful that I think are changing the landscape rapidly now and will continue in the short term, which is the farthest out that I can project. When I was assigned this column in 2000, the editor at the time said that it's not just a technology column. It's about the intersection of technology and culture. In every column, he wants to know not just what the gadget is, but how it's going to affect things, how it makes a difference. So this talk is divided in two. Part is about technology, and part is how it's going to affect the future generation. Um, I think that when we are talking to our grandchildren or great-grandchildren. We're going to say, when I was your age, if you wanted to check your email, you had to drive around town looking for a coffee shop. <laughs> I, we did. We had wireless base stations, yay, 100 feet across. You know, it's ridiculous that we build buildings nowadays with running water, electrical, heat and cooling, lighting, but no internet. It's an afterthought every time. Come on, where is the universal ubiquitous internet? Right now, we have all these, uh, these half measures. We have you know, tethering, and we have, uh, and it's not, by the way, not just for, to get our laptops online. Nowadays, everything needs Wi-Fi. Um, cameras and picture frames and ebook readers. Um, right now, you can pay $60 a month and get one of these cards that goes into your laptop. It's pretty slow. Um, it doesn't work for anything but your laptop. You can do tethering, which is when you pay $20 or $30 extra a month to use your cell phone as a glorified antenna for your laptop, but it's slow and it's a lot of money and it eats battery like crazy. Um, this is one of the more interesting things I've seen. This is the MiFi. It's about the size of a credit card, um, but it's actually a portable, battery-operated, personal hotspot. So it's in your pocket or in your purse all the time. You are the hotspot. You become a walking Wi-Fi. And anyone within 100 feet of you can hop online, too, up to five of you at once. Um, there's a password on the sticker on the bottom. So I was on this plane one time, and we were stuck on the runway for like three hours. We left the terminal, so obviously no Wi-Fi. And I was working away on my laptop because I had the MiFi in my computer bag. And the guy next to me was going nuts. He kept like looking over. And he wasn't trying to see what I was doing. He was looking at my menu bar where it said like four bars. <laughs> and he was like, finally, like, how are you doing that? He was like driving him crazy. Um, and I said, well, I have a portable base station in my bag. Would you like to join? And I showed him the password, and everybody was happy. So what's really cool about that is that any gadget now in vicinity, like imagine a van drive with your family, right? Four hours to Vermont, and they're on, online the whole time. Um, but what it does is it adds internet co con connection, a mobile internet connection to any gadget, which really changes things. It didn't take long for people to start thinking, 
what is an iPod Touch if not an iPhone minus AT&T? If only that thing could get online all the time, it would be an iPhone. That is exactly what that thing does. It turns